Howdy and welcome to another Bevy video. This was a super productive week for me and I got a lot of interesting systems up in the game. First up, I added post-processing like I did for my Game Jam game, and I'm going to walk through that process today. I created a simple vignette effect for the game, but in the future I should be able to add more effects to polish up the game. Next I added rapier physics to the game, so now walls have proper hitboxes. I broke the game out into two apps, the game and the editor, and before I make more levels, I'm going to need to make a custom level editor to lay out these hitboxes in a better way. Finally, I decided to port the game into 3D. This was very painful to do, and I'll talk about some of my complaints, but I think overall this is a huge improvement that opens up a lot of possibilities and matches the inspiration games better. As always, the current game is up on itch, and the code is available at the GitHub branch in the description. Be warned, this is a messy point though, and many things aren't completely reworked for 3D yet. So without further ado, let's start looking at implementing post-processing. Most of what I'm showing here can be found in the Bevy post-processing example, but I have a few tricks I've added to make it easier to work with. First up, we need to render the entire game to an image instead of the screen. All we need to do is create the image, for which I decide to go with a 1080p image. This limits the true resolution of the game, but I think it should work fine with the graphic style I'm targeting. Then, we create the camera and we set the target to be the image handle. I also add this image handle as a resource so I can easily get it from other systems in the future. That's pretty much all we need to do to get a bevy camera to render to an image. You can set the UI camera config if you don't want to render UI to the image, but I actually kind of like to because now I don't need to worry about the font size not being dynamic and word wrapping anymore. My game now supports any resolution of final screen fearlessly. There is one nightmare of this approach, and that is because the UI systems scale and lay out the UI based on Windows dimensions, not the camera. I overcame this by changing all of my percentage based layouts to pixel layouts, with the screen size hard coded, and all the offsets are from the top left of the screen. I kinda don't like this, but it works and I'm much happier to not be constantly stressing that the game will look horrible if I half the resolution on itch or if I let users go into full screen. Next up for post-processing, we need to actually create the camera that will render the image to the screen. This is going to be a 2D camera, and I'm going to layer all of my post-processing images on top of each other in 2D space for this camera. Things in Bevy pick what camera can see them by a render layout component, and by default I want everything to be seen by the 3D main camera. Thankfully, not specifying a render layer shows everything on the default layer 0. For a main camera, I'm going to set the render layer to the max layer, which is total layers minus 1. Now any entity that has a render layer component with this layer will be seen by the camera that also has that layer as a component. I set up this camera as a 16x9 camera with the auto min scaling option. This creates black bars on the tops and sides when the screen is in a 16 by 9 ratio, which is what I want. I also set the order to be a huge number so this camera is the last to render, and I turn off UI because that's handled by the 3D camera. Now I just create a quad mesh that will be my 16 by 9 virtual screen, and I set its texture to the image being rendered by the 3D camera. I also make sure this new mesh is set to the proper render layer, and if everything works, then the game should look exactly the same as it did before. Now, creating a post-processing effect is the same as creating any other material. First, I set up the material strut, which holds everything I want to access in the shader. Weirdly enough, on web it seems that uniforms must be a multiple of 16 bytes, so the first pass of the shader worked fine on my machine, but just panics in the web if I don't add these two buffer floats to the strut. So watch out for that and test your shaders if you're targeting web. Then I implement Material 2D, and thanks to the new material system, I just need to return the file of my shader. For my actual shader, I followed a simple Unity tutorial and created the vignette. We just center the UVs and get a circle by taking their length, and then turn that into a mask using a smooth step, and finally multiply our game render by the mask to get a nice darkening of the corners. I'm actually really impressed with Bevy here because most of the porting from Unity was cutting out all of the crazy stuff that Unity required to achieve the same result. Back in Rust, I spawn another quad and set it to have our material and give it the render image and our settings. 
I also make sure it's on the post-processing layer and that its z-value puts it in front of the actual game texture. For this effect, I actually don't need to use the game texture and I could have just made it a transparent overlay, but for other effects having the ground truth texture is often helpful. As one last nicety, I made the settings a component and I add that to the entity as well. Now I create a system to update the material to use these settings every frame. I could change the text here, but this is development only so I'm not worried about performance. With all of this in place, I can now change the settings in the inspector and tune my effect without needing to recompile and launch the game every time. I also could have the effect change dynamically based on events in the game. Overall, I'm very happy with a lot of the side effects of this change. Not only do I get easy post-processing effects, but I also now have all of my UI fears handled by just rendering it to a texture. Fonts will still look a bit janky when resizing, but I would rather have the fuzz than having the text poke out of the boxes or look way too small on larger screens. Next up, I added physics to the game. There isn't really much to talk about with this, but all I ended up doing was adding rapier to the game. Then I created a spawn hitbox helper function, which created a rapier collider box. I still need to parent these to an entity to keep the hierarchy clean though. Next, I add the hitboxes to my room descriptor asset, and now when the room is restored, I spawn all of the hitboxes for the walls. Also, by tagging all of these entities as overworld entities, they're automatically cleaned up when I enter combat or eventually change rooms. Then, I set the player to have a nice collider and swap over to using Rapier's character controller. Now in player movement, I just changed my code from modifying the transform directly to setting the target movement of the controller. This will let Rapier handle if the player can actually move in the direction they are holding, and the result feels great to play. For the final change this week, I decided to swap the game over into 3D. This better aligns with my source material, and I have a weird idea for the art style I want to try out over the next few weeks. In my head, I thought this would be a super easy change, as the game already was kinda 3D because of how Bevy works under the hood. Unfortunately though, this turned out to be a brutal change that took a whole day of programming. I was hoping laying out CoreLogic systems in 2D first would be a valid prototyping step, but in hindsight, I should have started with 3D if that was my final goal. Get ready for a rant. First up, nothing that works in Bevy 2D will even be acknowledged by a 3D camera. All of my sprites just don't render for 3D camera, so they all need to be reworked to use a quad with a material. Also, there's not support I could find for using a sprite sheet with the quad approach, so I have to manually calculate and update the UVs myself. Thankfully, I'd already abstracted over the sprite management, so most of these changes were isolated to the art module. Here, I opted to avoid needing to get the material and mesh asset every time I want to spawn a new sprite by creating a cleanup system that gets any sprite without a mesh and sets them up with the material mesh bundle. I hope this system never comes back to bite me though. I also have some technical debt that I had to repay, where I was using different enums for different sprite categories, which ended up being a horrible mistake when I needed to redo all these systems. I opted to work all of these into one mega enum that can now handle all of the sprites and the result here is much cleaner. However, for weapons, I was reusing that same enum to determine the attack type, so I kinda had a mess there and I needed to rework the attacking systems as well. This is all my own bad design though, so I'm not blaming Bevy for that. What I will blame Bevy for is using Y as up in 3D. I could change this, but when I load models, they'll all use Y as up, and I don't want to have to deal with this forever, so I decided to fix my entire existing game to save future headaches. Originally, this seems like it would be a trivial thing to work around, but in many places I was modifying only the X and Y values of Vex, and specifically was truncating the vectors. Now, when I want to move on the XZ plane, I can't just call truncate, and I need to either manually get X and Z, or reorder the Vec and then truncate. This might just be a me problem, but for games that mainly have logic on the XZ plane, this seems really annoying to need to remove the middle value of the vector instead of the end value. This also meant that I couldn't just change my Z values. Literally everywhere I needed to swap Z and Y, which was a really tedious problem. 
Eventually, though, I fought through it and created the 3D version of my testing map. For some reason, the Z values are inverted, but I had the game working in 3D. My particle system isn't completely ported yet, but I like to make my devlogs on Fridays, and every week can't have everything working, I guess. I love the end result, but I was kinda bitter when I needed to swap everything away from sprites and the quads and swap all of my Y and Z values. Now, I found a nice Blender tutorial that shows exactly how to make pixel-perfect 3D models, and I can make one unit in-game be 16 pixels, and I think this should be a great effect. I even included my version of the tutorial model just to check and I really like how this turned out. The combat scene is in a tragic place right now, but we'll fix all of that next week I guess. Overall, I think I made a lot of great progress this week and I hope you enjoyed the pseudo tutorial on post-processing. I think the game will play better in 3D and I'm excited to add more overworld movement in the next few weeks so it's a bit less stale to play. As always, thank you so much to my wonderful Patreons, and thank you for watching.